So it's been a long time dream of mine to set up a mixing environment in Reaper where I can make use of all the amazing plugins that I have, as well as the incredible, beautiful sounding analog gear that I've been collecting over the years. I finally made it happen. Let's check it out. Mixing with plugins or in the box mixing has opened up a world class audio experience to the masses. Whether you're an established audio professional or a budding bedroom producer, access to affordable, high quality plugins have in some ways leveled the playing field. But there's a reason why most successful producers make use of analog hardware and outboard gear. First, analog gear sounds amazing, often adding warmth, color, and depth to mixes that can give your audio that it factor. Second, it's way more hands-on than mouse clicking a plugin. For example, being able to twist knobs and push buttons creates a more active and engaging experience and encourages you to mix with your ears rather than with your eyes. And finally, let's admit it, analog gear looks cool. When I clock into work every day, whether I'm producing music or editing a podcast, having my gear around me is actually inspiring. It makes me feel like I have options and it's fun to experiment with the gear especially if I need to take a break from looking at a computer screen all day. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what gear you need to mix with hardware in Reaper, what cables and connections are required, how to route the hardware so you can start mixing with it, as well as ways to print that audio in Reaper. Let's take a look. All right, let's talk about gear. You're gonna need an audio interface that has multiple inputs and outputs. Some high quality but affordable examples are made by Focusrite, PreSonus, Audient, and more. You're gonna need at least one piece of analog gear. This could be an EQ, compressor, or any number of hardware effects like reverb and delay. You could even use guitar pedals. Finally, you'll need the appropriate cables, ranging from XLR to XLR, XLR to TRS, or TRS to TRS. This really depends on your setup. Now, in my case, I use an Audient ID22. Although this is an excellent interface, by itself, it's not really set up to hybrid mix in Reaper. Although the ID22 has six outputs, it only has two inputs, which makes it difficult to route audio to the hardware and back into the Audient. Besides, I use the two inputs on the Audient for my vocal chain or other recordings here in my studio, so those inputs are already taken. But because the Audient ID22 has eight at in and out ports, this allows me to add eight channels of additional IO. In my case, I've just added the Ferrofish Pulse 16, which can be connected via eight at using a pair of optical cables. A quick side note, the Ferrofish is an excellent and affordable AD to DA converter that provides up to 16 channels of inputs and outputs. Make sure and subscribe to the channel as I'll be doing a review and tutorial of the Ferrofish Pulse 16 in an upcoming video. And before we move on, here's a really important piece of information. If you're wanting to expand your IO by ADAT to be able to mix in Reaper, it's imperative that the audio interface and converter you're using both have ADAT in and out ports. This will allow audio to be sent from your DAW, in our case Reaper, out to the hardware effects and back into the DAW. I hope that makes sense. Now let's take a look at the cables and connections you're gonna to need to make. If you already have an interface that has say eight inputs and outputs, the Focusrite Scarlet or Claret come to mind, then you'll just need TRS to XLR or TRS to TRS cables, depending on what sort of outboard gear you're routing to. Again, if you're expanding your IO via ADAT, you'll need two optical cables. For demonstration purposes, let me show you all the cables that I'm using to connect my setup. First, I've got two optical cables to connect my Ferrofish Pulse 16 converter to my Audient ID22. One optical cable goes from the ADAT out port on the Ferrofish and gets connected to the ADAT in on my ID22. Another optical cable goes from the ADAT out on my ID22 to the first ADAT in on the Ferrofish. In my case, I'm using the Ferrofish as the master clock, set to 44.1 kilohertz, and it's connected via ADAT. My audience software recognizes that the Ferrofish is the master, as you can see by this green dot. 
Now that the two devices are connected and working properly, it's time to connect the cables to and from my outboard gear. The back of the Ferrofish has up to 16 inputs and outputs. In my case, I'm only using the first eight channels. The connections on the Ferrofish require quarter inch TRS cables. That said, my outboard gear utilizes XLR connections. So I'm gonna use TRS to XLR cables to route the audio to and from the Ferrofish. Here's the outboard gear that I'll be connecting. A Black Lion Audio 17 compressor, which is a single channel compressor. A Drummer 1974 EQ, which is a stereo EQ. A Warm Audio Bus Comp, which is a stereo compressor. And a Solid State Logic Fusion, which is a stereo mixing or mastering processor. Let's connect the Black Lion Audio 17 compressor. First, I'll connect a TRS to XLR mail cable from the output one on the back of the Ferrofish to the input on the back of the BLA. I'll then connect an XLR female to TRS cable from the output of the BLA and back into input one on the Ferrofish. For the Drummer 1974 EQ, I'll connect two TRS to XLR mail cables from output three and four on the back of the Ferrofish to the inputs left and right on the back of the drummer. I'll then connect two XLR female, two TRS cables from the left and right outputs of the drummer and back to inputs three and four on the back of the Ferrofish. For the Warm Audio Bus Comp, I'll connect two TRS to XLR male cables from output five and six on the back of the Ferrofish to the inputs left and right on the back of the Warm Audio. I'll then connect two XLR female to TRS cables from the left and right outputs of the warm audio back to the inputs five and six on the Ferrofish. And finally, for the SSL Fusion, I'll connect two TRS to XLR male cables from outputs seven and eight on the back of the Ferrofish to the inputs left and right on the back of the Fusion. I'll then connect two XLR female to TRS cables from the left and right outputs of the Fusion and back to inputs seven and eight on the back of the Ferrofish. Okay, so now that all my cable connections are made, let's take a look at how to configure the routing to be able to mix in Reaper. So I've got a track set up here in Reaper, but before we do any mixing with the outboard gear, I wanna change my input and output default to make things more clear and streamlined moving forward. Open up the preferences and under audio, go to channel naming and mapping. From here, make sure both of these boxes are checked. This will allow us to edit the names of our inputs and outputs. Let's click on the outputs. You can see that Reaper recognizes all my outputs. Analog 1 through 6 are the outputs on my Audient ID22, and channel 7 through 14 are the expanded ADAT outputs on my Ferrofish Pulse 16. So I'm going to go ahead and rename these to correspond to my outboard gear. To rename an output, just double click it. Because I'm using output seven or optical one to send to the Black Lion audio compressor, I'll rename it BLA 17. I'll go ahead and leave output eight or optical two as is, since I'm not gonna use it in my current setup. Because I'm using output nine or optical three to send to the left channel of the drummer 1974 EQ, I'll name it 1974 EQ left. And because I'm using output 10 or optical four to send to the right channel of the drummer 1974 EQ, I'll name it 1974 EQ right. Because I'm using output 11 to send to the left channel of the warm audio bus comp, I'll name it bus comp left. Because I'm using output 12 to send it to the right channel of the warm audio bus comp, I'll name it bus comp right. And finally, because I'm using output 13 to send to the left channel of the SSL Fusion, I'll name it SSL Fusion Left. And because I'm using output 14 to send to the right channel of the SSL Fusion, I'll name it SSL Fusion Right. Now my outputs are named in Reaper, corresponding to how my outboard gear is being routed. But we also need to rename the inputs. Just like the outputs, you can see that Reaper recognizes all my inputs. Analog 1 and 2 are the inputs on my Audient ID22, and inputs 3 to 10, which correspond to optical 1 through 8, 
are the expanded ADAT inputs on my Ferrofish Pulse 16. Just like our outputs, I'm going to name the input Optical 1 BLA17. We'll even put Optical 2 as it is since we're not using it in my current setup. Input Optical 3 will be 1974 EQ left. And input optical 4 will be 1974 EQ right. Input optical 5 will be bus comp left. And input optical 6 will be bus comp right. And finally, input optical 7 will be SSL fusion left. and input optical 8 will be SSL fusion right. Okay, now that all the inputs and outputs are renamed to correspond with my analog gear, let's open up a session in Reaper and start mixing. So here we are in a Reaper session. I've got some tracks pulled up. Here we've got a bass line and some drums. I want to run the bass line through the warm audio bus compressor. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my effects and in the filter, search reinsert. Reinsert is essentially a utility plugin that acts as a virtual patch bay to allow you to access analog hardware. Logic has a similar function with its IO plugin and Studio One does something similar with its pipeline function. So to access the warm audio bus comp, in hardware send left, I'm gonna choose bus comp left, which shows up because we renamed it. For the right channel, I'm gonna choose bus comp right. Below is the return. Again, I'll choose bus comp left and bus comp right. But we're not done. Because there's some latency when sending audio through external hardware, we need to click the ping button, which automatically detects and compensates for latency. So as you can see, the compressor's bypassed. Let's go ahead and play the bass line. So there you have it. I'm now able to use the reinsert plugin to essentially use my warm audio bus compressor as a plugin. It's super simple and it sounds amazing. Let's try another one. This time I want to send the tracks through the SSL Fusion. First, I'll create a folder for the tracks, then open an instance of reinsert. For the send, I'll choose SSL Fusion left and SSL Fusion right. For the return, I'll choose SSL Fusion left and SSL Fusion right. Hit ping detect and start mixing. So there you have it. It's really as simple as that. But there's one final tip we need to go over, and that's how to render or print the audio that we're sending through the outboard gear. So one of the benefits of using plugins in Reaper is that when it comes time to bounce or render your project, you can do offline render, which will render your tracks out quickly. Conversely, one of the drawbacks to mixing with analog hardware is that when it comes time to mix, you have to render or print things in real time. Not a game changer for me, but it's something you need to consider in your own workflow. Now there's probably multiple ways to print your hardware effects in Reaper. I'm gonna show you the way I do it. If you're smarter than me, if there's a better way that you have done this, please leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to hear what you have to say. So here's a drum track that I've mixed with my warm audio bus comp. I like the way it sounds, so I want to print it to free up my compressor to use on another track. 
So I'm going to create a new track and name it Drums Bus Comp Print. Next, I'm going to open up the routing on the original drum track, the track that's being mixed through the compressor, and send it to my print track. I'm also going to take the original track out of the master parent send. Now the compressed track is being sent through the new print track, but we need to record it onto this track. Right click the record button and choose record output, record output stereo. Now when I hit record, it's going to start printing the original compressed track onto the new print track. When I'm done, I'll remove the send, put the original back through the master parent, and either mute it or archive it in the track manager. Now the hardware compressor effect is printed, and I can now use my warm audio bus comp on another track if needed. Okay, so I know that this is a ton of information. I know this stuff can be really confusing. Uh, it took me some time to figure out how to do this on my own setup, so hopefully you were able to follow along. Hopefully you're able to get some in inspiration to start mixing with analog hardware in your own Reaper setup. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you get updates every time I put out a new video. All right, well, that's it for today. Take care of yourselves. Peace out. We'll catch you next time.